everyone, it's Leanne here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how I created this gatefold wedding card. And this is using the Happy Wedding stamp set from Lawn Fawn. So to begin, I'm using the gray lace piece of recollections paper from Michaels. I have a dark gray uh, iridescent paper, I guess, and a pink linen. These are all loose leaf from Michaels. And so I'm going to cut these up to be the gate folded card. Now, I did a test with my yellow paper there, and I'm just laying out my elements to see positioning and size. The final size of this card will be 5 inches squared, and I want to fold two sides in, like a book. So on the left side, I will leave a 1 inch overhang for that fold, and then on the right will be a 4.5 inch overhang on that side. So those two outside panels, when put together, will overlap by half an inch. So that'll give it enough room that it covers up each other and, but enough room to open it as well. So it's not too big. So here I've cut my paper to be four and a half inches tall for the gray lace. And I'm using the, the iridescent dark gray as my cardstock. So that one is my five by five card. And that's gonna be um, folded with the one inch and the four and a half inch on each side. So with the half inch off of the gray lace, you can see how that centers there. So I'm going to bring this to my Martha Stewart folding um, apparatus. I don't know what this is called actually, but it's pretty handy. So I'm using my bone folder and doing a score line at the six inch mark. And then I'll do one on the left as well at the one inch mark. This is super nice and handy because it keeps the lines very straight and everything matches up perfectly when it's folded. And that was the biggest thing. So when I am creasing down the edges, I lay my bone folder flat and I do this because if I was to use the edge of the bone folder, it would make the crease shiny on the paper just because this paper is really thick and it's a coated paper. So it's nice, it's best if you leave it flat, lay the bone folder flat and just score it over top. So here I'm just double checking the lace as well and I'm going to put that on both sides of the outside panels. And so to get everything centered up, I'm going to tape the card down. I've used my T-square and lined it against the edge of my drafting table. And I'm going to find the center here. I start at the one inch line, not at the end of the ruler, because the end of the ruler isn't exactly accurate for finding the edge. Sometimes you'll notice your little tick marks at the end go off and they're not exactly perfect. So I measure from one inch in. And to help me remember where that center is, I just put some masking tape down and marked it with a Sharpie pen. So I know the size that I need the lace paper to be, and I just trimmed off the edge, but I left a little overhang so I can trim that nice and clean and flush to the edge when I'm done. So now I'm going to create the little peephole that my little chicks are going to sit in. And the sentiment banners as well, and just making sure that where I place the circle template still leaves enough room for the banners at the bottom. And these are the everyday sentiment banners from Lawn Fawn. So once I'm happy with the placement there, I'm going to hold it down with post-it tape and run it through my die cutting machine. Now I have two circles that I'm using and the bigger circle is what I'm using to cut the lace out of. And I'm doing this because I want the background of the base of the cardstock to show through underneath that lace so it acts as a border. And you'll see that when I do this die cut here. So I've brought that back to my craft table and I'm just centering the smaller circle die cut in where I put the larger circle die cut on the lace paper. And I'm just double checking to make sure that's centered and everything is perfect, which is great. So now what I'm gonna do, this will run through my die cutting machine pretty easily. I'm just going to open it up flat and run it through like that. And it's only five inches wide, so it fit pretty nice. So this creates the little peephole for the base of the card. And here you can see where there's an edge um, inside the circle where the base of the card acts as a border. And that's because I use that smaller circle there. So I'm ready to tape this down and I'm going to use my tape roller and just add some tape to the back of the lace piece. And then I'm just going to eyeball this and try to center it with that circle, making sure it's all lined up and good. I've also left a margin on the left as well. 
Um, I have a margin there so that you visually know that that's where the break in the card is and that's where you open it. So I've brought this to my cutting mat and just trimmed off that overhang that I left originally. And now I have a perfect flush piece here. So it's time to do the other side and I'm going to do this the same. I'm going to leave a margin on the right side because that's the edge where you open it up and I just want that visual cue to know that it's there. So I'm taping this down as well. And I'm just going to run my tape roller on this and eyeball again where to place the lace paper. My rule of thumb is you look at things with your eyes. You don't always need to measure exactly the center point. If it's something close like this and you have the edges as reference and you don't have a large margin, you can pretty much eyeball it and get it straight. And people don't look at things with rulers. They look at them with their eyes anyway. So if it does look center, it'll be center. So there I just matched it up and pushed it down into place. And I'm going to trim off that overhang as well. So I'm just using my cutting mat and my metal ruler with my X-Acto knife. Now I've cut this paper here and this is four and a half inches square. So I left a little bit of a border and this is going to serve as the backdrop for my image as well as the inside base for my card. So because this um, card base is folded, it pops up a lot. So it's just easier to tape it down. I'm just adding tape here with my tape roller to the pink. And then again, I'm just going to eyeball that. It's pretty close to the edges that are nice and straight, and it's pretty easy for me to judge how close I am to the margins and how even it needs to be. So I'm just pushing that in place. So now it's time to do the sentiment banners. I'm going to do one in a vellum and one in the pink linen. So I've used the smaller template to cut out the pink linen and the larger one for the vellum piece. So I'm just carefully popping those out and just double checking the spacing and how far I need to bring those in. I'm using the sentiment from the happy wedding set as well. I think happy wedding is a really cute phrase and it's not a common phrase that you would find on a wedding card like congratulations or something more generic. So I thought this was really fun. And I'm making this card for my cousin for her wedding um, in September, so I thought it would be perfect for this situation. So I've just added some clear embossing powder after I stamped that, and I used Versamark ink, or Versafine. Versafine, I get those two mixed up all the time. But yeah, it's Versafine, and it's in onyx black. So I embossed that with my heat gun and put a little bit of tape on that and just centered it onto my banner as well. Now, I want to make sure that the sentiment lines up with the center of the circles. Just a note too, when you're doing the center part, when you're putting the circle templates on the card, make sure you do it to the center of the card, not the center of the panel. Because there's an odd overhang and they break in an uneven space, visually, you can if you center it to the panel, then you're, you will visually look at it crooked because you'll look at the center as being the right side of the card. So make sure... Basically, when you center the circle template, you center it to the full width of the card and not just the panel. So here I'm coloring in the little chicks and the cake from the stamp set. And I'll put all the colors in the description below and with links as well if you want to check those out. And I wanted to keep this kind of light and whimsical, so I'm using a lot of colorless blender to blend in those lighter colors. And her wedding theme is baby pink so that's why I'm using this color scheme to put with the card and because of the gray lace paper and the gray pearlized iridescent cardstock you could pretty much put any accent color and use that in your colorings as well as with the linen card and you could make it for any theme so I'm just blending this out here and softening the shadows and the colorless blender works amazing for just keeping those colors nice and light, but still letting them look blended. It's a pretty handy tool. So here I have these guys positioned. This is generally where I want them to go. Um, for the cake stand, I want that to just be underneath the window. I don't want to see the base of the cake stand popping up. So I've put a bit of... Um, 
tape on the back with my tape roller and I've just attached that to my X-Acto blade and I'm just positioning it and pivoting it inside the window so that I can see how low it needs to be. And then once I put it down, I just nudged it into place to make sure it was straight. And a little bit more of nudging there. And then when I was happy with it, I just pressed it down. Now for the chick, the uh, bride and groom chick, I'm going to put them on foam tape. I want them to pop up from the circle because they are the focal point. So I want them to be nice and loud and big and the first thing you see. So I'm just elevating those with some scotch foam tape. And again, just using my X-Acto knife to position them and then pushing them into place once I'm happy with their placement. And there you have it. This is my gate folded peekaboo wedding card. Um, and it's a uh, five by five inch square. I thought that was kind of a unique shape. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you're notified the next time I post a video. Thanks so much for watching.